Okay. And you can hear people yell and then saw, I saw the car just start, just, I mean, it, it happens real fast, you know, it's like that. Well, first the car hit two other cars. So, the so originally the car came down the hill and slammed into two other cars that were just parked and couldn't go anywhere because of the crowd. And so you hear that noise of the cars like slamming together. And then he, he put it in reverse and then drove into the crowd. So the first thing we heard was the noise of him hitting the other two cars, which I... No, he hit the people before the car. He, he ran through part of the crowd, hit a bunch of people, and then hit the car that was behind us. He tried to get away. I thought it was a gunshot because I'm short and I couldn't see. So yeah, I thought it was a gunshot. So I ducked, like I ducked down, thinking it was like a shotgun that had gone off, and and then people who were hit by cars like flew back and fell on top of me. Is it how, so that's how you injured your leg? Yeah. It's broken in two places. It's broken in two places. Okay. <clears throat> Basically, I was squat, I was like this, like my leg was like in this position, you know, like, because I like, had ducked down thinking there was a gun. And then when people came back from being hit by the car, they landed right here on my leg, which like fractured my ankle and broke my upper fibula. I mean, it was a direct result of the the car assault. Mm. Wow. As we're trying to refer to it as the act of terrorism. You just don't you don't forget that noise. The car like bodies hitting the car, you know, the flying over. Really. Man, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Right, because I tell us to people. My first time seeing somebody get killed was in, when I was in the West Bank. Unless you, unless you see somebody get murdered, killed, you do not know what it's like. like there ain't no, ain't nothing can prepare you for that. Yeah, no, that's. I would say that's true. You know, we've said since we started doing this work, since we started this this group in this park over a year ago, is that going to take one of us getting murdered for people to take the threat seriously. You know, it's also unfortunate that it has to be a white person, you know, because other people have been getting killed, you know, Muslims have been attacked and murdered almost weekly for months, you know. And Black people are always under attack. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing we hear the most often in our movement is that, you know, people of color, Trans and queer people are just tired because they're fighting all the time. You know? <clears throat> so yeah, it's what's said. Their fights at work, their fights at the grocery store, their fights everywhere they go. Like we get to choose when we want to fight. We go, we go fight in the street, but like our fight's not every single day. So yeah, that's, that's the danger. Of this is normalizing white supremacy. Is is dangerous for a lot of people. You know, when the news says there's two sides, like, there's not two sides. Like, if white supremacy is allow allowed a platform to organize and speak from, like, people will get killed. <clears throat> you know, we've seen it over and over again throughout history. We've seen it in our own community. So, to the person watching this who's shocked, who had no idea about what was going on, and say they wanted to get involved or how they could help, what would you tell them to like fight against the white supremacy and the rise of neo-Nazis? I mean, there's simple things like call it out when you see it, come to people's aid when they ask for your help. <clears throat> you know, we've asked other progressive groups like to adopt anti-fascism into their platform. It doesn't mean violence, it doesn't mean non-violence, it just means having analysis and standing up against like the rising tide of of neo-fascism it's, it's just that simple <clears throat> i mean there are anti-fascist groups all over the world i i it would like 
many different countries have anti-fascist organizations. So like the easiest way, if people don't live in a super rural area, if people live in a city to get involved is to find your local anti-fascist group and plug in. Like there's probably already organizing going on where people are. I mean, unless they live in a very remote location. The unfortunate thing though too, with all the media coverage of this past weekend, it's some people that watch that and be like, they need to get involved on the other side. <coughs> or do you think it was a black eye for the alt-right? Or the yeah, end? I mean, that's, that's always a danger. But I mean, we just, we can't back down in the face of this because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's beyond the point of being dangerous, you know, especially in this country when you have like self-avowed self-described white nationalists like holding state power. The advisor of the president, Steve Bannon, is a self-described white nationalist. So if there was ever a time, like, this is the time. I mean, when people, it's not a good look for them. Um, you know, they've tried to present themselves as, you know, 